Welcome back guys to Phoenix Wright Justice for All as we move back to Juan Kalida's room expecting to find something. Now that Dick Gumshoe's gone off to find a bug scanner. Let us head inside and see if he's managed to procure it from the place that he's no longer employed. He's not exactly a sneaky looking guy, is he? Hey, you're finally here, pal! Sorry to keep you waiting. Do you have the, um, bug sweeper? Um, well, you see, I got busted trying to sneak in, pal, and suddenly, I'm staring at the precinct doors. From the outside, I mean. So, yeah, I couldn't get one of the police bug sweepers. What do you mean you couldn't get one? We need that item. Hey, hey, calm down, pal. I didn't say I didn't get one, just not the police's. Wow, so this is a bug sweeper. It looks a little broken. Hey, this was made when I was in elementary school, pal. What? Oh? By who? Me, of course! Ah, seeing this shirt brings back memories. Hey, don't look down on it, pal! Sure it looks a little beat up. But I put my heart and soul into building this puppy here. Your heart and soul? It'll work. Trust me, pal. It'll do the job. But... But... But you can't set the sensitivity! So it's going to beep at anything that gives off electromagnetic waves. But isn't it better that way? Oh, <laughs> well, anyway, since I brought it all this way, might as well give it a whirl, right, pal? I'm getting that sinking feeling again. Okay, now I'll tell you how to use this baby. There's a listening device or some other sort of bug hidden in this room, pal. So we're going to find it, right? Right. Now, first, let's turn the sweeper on. Next, touch the sweeper and take a real good look around the room with it, pal. You can see how strong the radio waves are. Wabs are? Yes, the radio wabs. Are in area by checking out the check gauge. Cool, checking out the check gauge. Once you find something that's given us strong waves, the gauge will change. And when that happens, touch the gauge to really give the thing a long hard stare. There's a lot of things here that's going to give off radio waves. So let's take a good look at anything and everything that seems suspicious. Okay, pal? Alright, I'm gonna go stand outside and keep an eye out. Give me a yell if you find the bug. Got it, pal? Okay then. Well, this is a super checkpoint. Ah, huh, what a lovely bear! <laughs> ah, this must be one of those fancy bear-shaped toy robots. It's a robot? It's a real robot? Y yeah, it's a real one. Mr. Nick. Y yes. H how many horse powers is it? How many horsies? Horsies? Um, well, look, it's a bear, so, uh, um, it's not got any horsies. Well, of course the light will have electromagnetic, but you never know, someone could be there. Lamp, check. Listening device, nope. There are a lot of lamps in this room, aren't there, Mr. Nick? Yeah. And they're all on. You shouldn't do that, Mr. Nick. Don't you know why it's wasteful? Uh, yeah, I'll be more conscientious from now on, sorry. But to be honest, if it's going to be anywhere, it's going to be in a bear. Of course, I was trying to loop into this one, so let's enter the bear party over here, eh? Because it's a gift, it's something that came into the thing. Well, that's a rice maker, and that's a coffee maker. They would make electromagnetic waves. And that's a laptop. That would also electromagnetic. That's a clock. Which is probably also electromagnetic, but let's check it out because it is a bear. Well, it certainly looks like an alarm clock. What's wrong? Why do you look troubled? I just can't imagine the listening device being inside this alarm clock. It just um, sort of reminded me of something that happened a long time ago. Ah. Oh. Well, anyway, it looks like the listening device isn't in here. I kind of imagine it to be within a bear, but not so much. Is that picking up the alarm clock still, or is it picking up something else? And here we have a dryer. Nothing unusual here, I think. A dryer? Oh, but it's not plugged in, is it? If we use it next to a TV, it'll make the screen look all weird, right? Yeah. When that happens, it's called electromagnetic interference, right? Hey, good memory, Pearls. I will never forget it for the rest of my life. Okay, then. Well, the laptop obviously is. What's that? 
It's the TV remote, isn't it? It's the TV remote control. I'm sort of thinking, I wonder if TV remote works on other things like, could I make you change your expressions like TV channels? Zap! Hey! Hmm, but if I could, who the people I would give the old mute button to? Well, I don't think it's going to work on me. Why don't we try it on May tomorrow, okay? Okay! It probably would work on it, right? So, normal electronic stuff, not so good. Something randomly near here. This is weird. Can we check it still? It doesn't mean anything giving off radio waves there, Mr. Nick. Keep a careful eye on the check gauge and let's try again. Okay, it isn't exactly the best. It isn't indeed. Well, that's a bare based thing. What's this? It still looks like a hot water pot, but it's a coffee maker. It's not gonna have it in. Oh well, it's kind of like a hot water pot, I guess. And instead of hot water, coffee comes out. Really? Th this pot can do that? Yes, it can. And is there a pot that orange juice comes out of? I don't think there's anything like that, Pearls. Sorry. Well, we're lacking good stuff at the moment, aren't we? Every lamp, every TV, the robot doesn't do much. That's a radio, that won't do much. Or much that we don't expect, anyway. Well, I'd have thought it definitely had to be a bear. Why is it... There's a specific place on this bear, why? This is... It's just a giant stuffed teddy bear, right? It's the biggest one I have you ever seen! Hey, so did you guys find it yet? A listening device? I mean, I think we have now, finally. That was such a specific place, it was ridiculous! No, not yet, but this bear's eyes... Let's see, let's see. A perfectly normal stuffed bear with some really strong radio waves. Sounds like you found the device to me, pal. Let's dig this big fella's eye out and see what we've got. N no, you can't. Such, such a fine intact. Hmm. <laughs> no. Th that's. It's a miniature camera, and it looks like there's more. There's a transmitter and a timer. A what? A what? A minute? A transmitter, pal. Oh, this more of that high-tech stuff? Right, tell me more, Mr. Gumshoe. After a while of searching, we finally found it. So this tiny thing is a camera? Yup, it's a pinhole CCD camera, pal. It's a small high-grade video camera mostly used in security systems. So it's a video camera. It runs on a battery, which comes with it in a set. But there's no videotape in this camera. This is only the camera part here, pal. The tape recorder with a tape inside is somewhere else. Somewhere else? The footage is changed into radio waves and then it's sent to that recorder. So, it's sort of like a TV broadcast, isn't it? Hey, you know, you're right! So, live feed is what we're saying there. So, what is a transmitter? It's a device that sends the footage the camera took to a specific destination. Like a video version of a listening device, pal. It looks like it's attached to a small clock-like thing. Oh, that's a timer, pal. You can set it to turn the camera on and record a certain time with it. You can set it for a certain time? Yup, let's see. This looks like it was set to start at 8pm and go for one hour. 8pm? That was the time the award ceremony ended. There's no date set, so it's been recording every night, I guess. Mr. Detective! How long has this bear been here? Um, I'm pretty sure it's been here since the night of the murder. Then, then maybe... Maybe this camera caught the murder on tape. What? And if you think about the angle the bear is at, it's bound to have had a clear shot of the whole crime, pal. Gumshoe, 
Clever man! So there was a camera in this bear's eye. And it was disguised as a present. I'm sure it was here on the night of the murder, pal. It's pretty big, so it stands out pretty well in my mind. But who gave Mr. Creed this present? I, uh, don't know, pal. But this means that someone out there has got a video of what happened here that night. Isn't there any way we can find out who that person is? It's impossible, pal. Radio waves can be sent almost anywhere, so there's no real way to find out. Oh. <laughs> is there really no way to find out? I got it! What? Hey, pal. Let me borrow this mini camera for a bit. What are you going to do? I'm going to go around to the electronic shop and see if I can find out who bought this. B but that's impossible. I mean, it's already 9 p.m. Leave it to me. You don't have to search all night. I'll find your man, pal. Okay. Mr. Gumshoe is useful. Oh, yeah, baby. It's investigating time. I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are itching to go. Yeah! He's gone. Yeah. Mr. Scuffy Detective sure is a nice man. He's pushing himself so hard, all for Mystic Mayor's sake. It's a mystery how you always manage to do things in the most inefficient ways. Ah! Yes, I thought it would be, and I skipped at the wrong time at one single phrase, which I'm sure was right. You'll have to excuse me. I heard your conversation just now. Edgeworth, what are you doing here? A rescue team has been decreated and deployed. I can't say I'm optimistic, but we have to move forward, one step at a time. Uh, I see. Thanks. Don't thank me yet. We still have to find her. Hmm. So there was a spy camera hidden inside the stuffed animal, huh? You are one lucky man, right? Do you know this stuffed bear, little girl? Um, I have no idea. Hmm. Of course not. The maker of this bear is a very expensive luxury brand from overseas. It's completely handmade and only a small number of these are exported here. B what? The camera and transmitter the scatterbrain detective took with him are dead ends. Things like those can be bought anywhere. However, this bear is different. By tracking how it got into this country, this bear can tell us who the buyer is. C can you really do that, Mr. Nick? Can he? Well, I guess so. Hmm, it's 9pm. I think I still make it in time. I'll be taking this for now. The whole bear? I'm sure you have other things you have to do. Right, so stuffed bear has been snatched up by Edgeworth. Things are going left, right and everywhere. See you soon, right? Wait! What? Why are you doing this? I have no interest in explaining myself to someone who cannot comprehend. But besides that, right? Until court reconvenes tomorrow, you should concern yourself with this question. Who was the person that murdered Juan Colida? The real killer. Do you really still think it was Adrian Andrews? To be honest, I don't know anymore. You still have a little time left. Find the truth right, everything begins with the truth. Juan Creed is real killer. Miss Andrews is past. The kidnapper, whose sole condition is an acquittal for Mr. On Guard. And this card, Shelley to Killer. Mayor, the only way I can save you now is to find all the answers to this case tonight. I don't understand what your real intentions are, Edgeworth. But as you said, all I can do for now is find the truth. And with that, we keep on going. But it's late at night, so what else can we do? It's past nine already, isn't it? I wonder, I wonder if Mr. Edgeworth has already found Mr. Mayor. These things take time, 
I say probably not. The police are professionals, Pearls. They'll find her, so don't you worry. And if we can win a not guilty verdict tomorrow, then everything will be okay. Y you're right. Okay then, Pearls. You have stuff to speak about, do you? So the real person who killed Mr. Creeder was... An assassin. Mr. Shelley de Killer, right? And the card Miss Andrews found in the crime scene seems to be proof of that. But if that's the case, then a new question comes to mind. Who was the one that hired De Killer to begin with? Who is his client? You mean, who asked for the murder? That person didn't want to dirty their own hands in blood. But whoever this client is, is still a killer. Who... who could have hired the assassin? Do you think it was Miss Andrews? I wonder. But if she was the client, then why go through the effort to stab the knife into the corpse herself? But if Miss Andrews wasn't the client, then no, it can't be. Matt on guard himself? If Mr. On guard really did hire the assassin, then he is not innocent at all. Far from it, he would be guilty of the crime. But, but it can be Mr. On guard, right? I mean, when we first talked with him... Mr. On guard, I'd like to ask one more question to you. Did you kill Mr. Juan Kalida? Alright, just so we're clear, dude. I didn't kill anyone, and that includes Jan Kalida, okay? I didn't see any Cyclox at that time. Actually, that reminds me. Did you remember something, Mr. Nick? Yeah, something Miss Andrews said at the trial today. She said something interesting. Um, so what is this interesting thing? Oh, that's right. You didn't hear it, did you, Pearls? Juan had bet everything on the wham jamming ninja this year. I gotta say, whamming, like Juan. And if he lost the Grand Prix, he was going to make sure Matt was going down with him. That's what he thought, anyway. It looked like somehow Juan had his hands a secret so powerful that it would destroy Matt's acting career had it been revealed. Mr. On Guard's secret? What is this secret? I don't know yet. But for now, let's think about it this way. Mr. Creeder was going to reveal this secret. Well, that means... Mr. On Guard had plenty of motive to have Mr. Creeder silenced. Which means we have to meet with Mr. On Guard. There's no way around it now. Indeed. And ask him a different, slightly rephrased question, I think? Well, I'm probably not going to get out easily, am I? Well, it's really getting late, isn't it, Mr. Nick? Yeah, it's past 9pm already. But we still have some things to prepare for tomorrow's trial. There's still the matter of this secret Mr. Creeder held about Mr. On Guard. And Miss Andrews' real intentions. These are two things I must know tonight. But aren't visiting hours over at the detention centre? Hmm. I'm sure we'll think of something, Pearls. Don't you worry. So we still can't move into On Guard's room again. But we can get to On Guard's place. Instead, as a trade. Oh. Hey, wait! What is it, whippersnapper? All I know is nothing there's anything to do with you is ever good! Like just now, I was handed this strange device for who knows what reason. And I was told to use it to search the whole hotel! That's the bug sweeper, isn't it? One gum she made. I don't know, and frankly, I don't care, but the request came from Edgy Poo, so. Edgeworth? And he said. If you feel angry, direct your anger at that unsophisticated lawyer. So I'm going to feel free to direct all my anger towards you! Ah, oh, gee! Thanks a bundle, Edgeworth! What a pal you are! Well, well, that said, we now have a huffy puffy. Madame Old Bag. This is absolutely top secret, so you had better keep it to yourselves. I heard they found a spy camera hidden in one of the presents. Hmm, very interesting. I'm sure it was, you know. It was to catch poor Juan in the middle of a scandalous meeting! Scandalous? What's that? 
It means, well, you know, that gossip that's been going around about my dear one. Oh, you mean that thing about Miss Andrews? I'm sure she must have had some reason for getting close to Mr. Karida. I'll let you in on another secret, young'un. I know who planted that spy camera. It was that obnoxious puffy head photographer girl that nervous some people. I doubt it. Spying on people by herself, as if it wouldn't want to see it for myself too. Why? Wow, the alien actually admitted a true intentions for a change. I don't know what you're thinking exactly, but I can bet it's nothing good. But I didn't say anything. Well, she has an antenna that can obviously read my mind. With that said, we start a new session of investigation by the look of the save point, so there's still a bit more to go. More for us to find out. And we know where we're really heading. Matt on guard. Let's go and find him next episode. Hopefully, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.